Hello everyone, this is RJ, and I want to welcome you joining me today as we are reading uh, through 1 Timothy and also praying along with the scripture. As I mentioned, Timothy, 1 Timothy is a book that Paul had written to his uh, disciple, his mentee, Timothy, for him to show how God's love and faithfulness is translated into the work and the ministry that they carry out. And in the beginning of this book, Paul emphasized once more how he has received, and I'll say more in a way, been able to acknowledge how God is faithful. He starts this portion of the chapter with a more of a prayer of thanksgiving. And this is how it starts. It says, I thank Christ Jesus, our Lord, who has given me strength because he considered me faithful. And I was captured by that word considered. How does Christ consider me faithful? Would Christ consider me faithful because I devote myself to God's ministry? As a matter of fact, if you look into the further verses, if you read those further verses, Paul denies that. It's not what we do. Christ is considering us faithful, or at this moment, Christ is considering Paul faithful because Christ and God is filled with faithfulness. So it is more of us understanding because God is full of faithfulness there's no other way than God for 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 us to be seen in God's eyes and considered faithful and that's what we call grace and this is what a person who acknowledged that grace says as Paul continues in verse 14 and 15 our Lord's favor poured all over me along with the faithfulness and the love that are in Christ Jesus. This saying is reliable and deserves full acceptance. Christ Jesus came into the world to save sinners, and I am the biggest sinner of all. Have you ever considered yourself as the biggest sinner of all? Your immediate instinct might say, oh, I did not commit any of the sins. But what Paul, what Paul is saying is, being a sinner, the biggest sinner of all, is not only of, of our actions. Of course, he does uh, share that some of the actions of ignorance that he had uh, shown toward the believers was a sin. But I also believe that one of the biggest sin is that in a moment of our life we might not have realized or acknowledged the faithfulness of our Lord. And once we acknowledge that faithfulness and when we realize when our eyes are open to that grace, there's no other way but for us to say, Oh Lord, I'm the biggest sinner of all. So have you ever done this before in your prayer? Have you ever confessed and said, Lord, I am such a sinner. I'm the biggest sinner of all people. And I need your mercy. And I need your grace. I want to see that grace. I want to fully accept that grace. I want to fully acknowledge how big and wide your grace and your faithfulness is and how it continues. And I would like to invite us to do so. So let us pray together. Oh Lord, oh Lord, I'm the biggest sinner of all people. I'm the biggest sinner because I don't know, I don't realize, 
I can understand the grace that you pour out in my life. I can fathom how you consider me faithful. But I cannot know and understand the full extent of your grace. So Lord, have mercy on me, a sinner. Have mercy on me, a sinner. Have mercy on me, a sinner. As we continue to pray, I would like to invite us to pray and intercede for this nation, nation that is battling against this virus, families who are affected by this virus, 170,000 families who lost their loved ones, families who are doing their best to recover from the economical difficulties. Also, all who feel unheard, oppressed, and who suffer the consequences of injustice. This nation that has a virus of division. This is our time to pray and intercede and ask for God's faithfulness, that unending faithfulness to once more consider this nation with God's faithfulness. Let us pray together. Now join me in the prayer that our bishop had asked us to pray every day, Almighty God, Father, Son, and Holy Spirit. We thank you for your blessing, past, present, and future. You are a rock and the source of our hope in all things, at all times. As Jehovah Jireh, our provider God, we ask you this day to stretch out your mighty hand and eradicate from the face of the earth forever this virus called COVID-19 that is spreading rapidly from continent to continent. We also pray that you, Jehovah Rapha, our healing God, would place your hand upon all those who have been stricken by this virus and restore them to full health. Be with those who have lost loved ones and are grieving. Protect all who are caring for those with this virus and keep them from contracting it themselves. Calm our fears and provide us with your peace that surpasses all understanding. Strengthen us with the joy of the Lord and help us to hold firmly to the hope that only you can provide. Unify us that we, the Virginia Annual Conference, may be able to experience anew the promise of your presence in and through the unity of our faith, hope, and trust. In you, in the days ahead and forever, we offer this prayer in the mighty name of our Lord Jesus Christ. Amen.
And let us continue to pray the prayer the our Lord had taught us, our Father which art in heaven. Hallowed be thy name. Thy kingdom come, thy will be done, on earth as it is in heaven. Give us this day our daily bread, and forgive us our trespasses, as we forgive those who trespass against us. And lead us not in temptation, but deliver us from evil. For thine is the kingdom, the power and the glory forever and ever. Amen. Amen. Thank you once more for joining me. Thank you for everyone who continue to support each other as we pray together. And may you continue to see how God is faithful. How God's faithful has never forsaken us. And how God's faithfulness will still be with us in this time of this pandemic. I hope you have a blessed day. And I pray that you will become a blessing to others. And I look forward to seeing you tomorrow. Bye-bye.